Welcome to the Soulful Living Show with Philip and Jane Mountrose and our special guest, Sharon A. Williamson from Buellton, <laughs> California, RN, uh, holistic practitioner, uh, and many other wonderful attributes, as you will see. And this is Soulful Living with us, Drs. Philip and Jane Mountrose, and we offer timely uh, solutions and tips you can use weekly, this week reaping the benefits of spiritual healing. We're going into our our only our own developed innovated uh, spiritual kinesiology process and with a live demo. Very exciting. Make sure you stay tuned. Let people know about it if they're if you're on now, because uh, this could be very special, very dynamic. And so each week on this show, uh, we discuss a single spiritually focused strategy or a key for for soulful living. And today it is uh, reaping the benefits of spiritual healing, and in this case with spiritual kinesiology, a healing process of reframing with the soul, as we will explain. And we hope you can join us each Sunday, start off the week right, apply these uh, strategies, these soulful tips and tools, let other people know about it, and welcome uh, Sharon, and, and hi, Jane. <laughs> Hi, hi, Philip. Hi, hi, Sharon. Yeah, it's so wonderful. This is, of course, <laughs> that really we're touching on now what is the heart of our work, which is spiritual healing. And we wanted to share this today because we're going to be talking, we're actually going to do a demonstration for you. And we're going to be talking about how easy it can be. It's a topic where people think spiritual healing is like this, whoa, this big, <laughs> big thing. And actually, it's it's not as far away as you might think it is. I, you know, it's important to us. I mean, very important because we reached a point in our lives where our lives weren't working for us. And there were things that we wanted specifically, in which included wanting to be able to access our own inner guidance, the truth within and wanting to have actually the keys, how can you do deep spiritual healing? We knew we needed healing at the time, but we didn't know what to do. Um, another thing that had been fascinating to us over the years was spiritual development and the idea of ascension and, and actually rising to a different dimensional level. And we wanted to know how to accelerate that process and make it easier. Having read, of course, like many people, well, this could take lifetimes. And, you know, it's like, oh, so, you know, it's never going to happen. Mm -hmm. um, but those things were important enough that we pursued them, which led us really to our purpose and to the work that we do now. This was in the 1990s. It was quite a while ago. So the things that we teach and that we're, that we're going to show you here are time tested. <laughs> And the main one is really a, a process from our uh, our system, a system we created called spiritual kinesiology. Um, and the process, it's a spiritual healing process, um, which Sharon knows about it along with, with us and many other people. So, so that's why we're excited mm -hmm. about sharing it today. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, it's something we uh, have kind of let the public know since 2004, we first found out about it in the 1990s, uh, in what something called hypnokinesiology, uh, based on hypnosis and kinesiology and uh, spiritual um, healing, NLP to neuro linguistic programming, combination of things like a lot of things. And we developed that um, by reframing and seeing the world from your soul's perspective uh, and this was the basis of the healing for not only um, a healing technique with guidance from your soul, from your inner wisdom, from your higher mind, um, but there's healing that can be derived from that very directly. And some very remarkable things can happen when you go to this different level um, for healing. Right. I think, I, Sharon, would you have any comments? I know Sharon is one of our graduates from many years ago, actually, and she's she's been doing this work herself for many years. So um, do you have any comments on that? Oh, you're going to have a hard time shutting me up. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it, I, I've, I've looked at the, the first, uh, the dates on the first information that uh, from when I started started studying with you and it was 2004 
Mm -hmm. Right, years ago. Many years. And, um, you know, I, I, I realized a little before that time that I was just kind of drifting through life wherever it took me that I was going and I really didn't have a direction to go. And when I found you, um, I was able to get uh, a, a focus, a, a way to go, and not only a way to go, but how to get there. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So important. So important. And um, yeah, I uh, what you have taught me has changed my life. I, um, <laughs> did I show the picture now? Yeah, that would be a good way of showing how you've changed. And this is, this this is, more, this is an outer change, but there's also the inner change. <laughs> and it was the inner change that allowed this to happen. Because I remember at one point in my life, I said, I actually said, maybe if I was fat, he would leave me alone. And that was a, a very deep wound right. that I I, uh, I didn't need that layer of insulation anymore, which I found when I studied with you. And so using the methods that you taught me to do that healing, I've lost 150 pounds. Yeah, that's, that's incredible. And, and kept that's it up. And it, and it just melted away because I didn't need it anymore. There was yeah. no awful struggle to, to do that. It, it just, I didn't need it. It went away. Yeah. Yeah. And it, I think it, one of the things that over the years, we've always, our focus has always been the fastest, easiest <laughs> ways to do things. And, and as I mentioned, one of our big goals was to connect with that truth within and what i would say also about what sharon did is she attributes it to the work that she did with us but it's not because of us it's because of connecting with her own truth and and it took us years to find a very like simple you know nobody can miss kind of a a way to do it the, uh, we we heard about a lot of different kind of very abstract ideas of different different things you could do but actually what we've found which makes a lot of sense if you look at things holistically that everything is connected and everything has meaning is that the truth of who we are and our inner wisdom comes from our heart you know the and it's right in plain sight follow your heart <laughs> you know, your heart knows the truth and if you can connect with that kind of state of and you might call it divine love to distinguish it from like just <laughs> what love that is conditional. Um, when you connect with that state, it is a state of connectedness, which is connectedness mm -hmm. with the divine and also with the things you want. So I think that's, that's what I would say about Sharon's success is that she connected with the truth within her. Right. And I had no idea how to do that. Right. Yeah. And most people don't. And and right. even people who are trying really hard mm -hmm. <laughs> and get these abstract kind of things, which may work for some people, but just not for many people. And we found with the, the people we work with, our clients and many, many students over the years, um, that if you can just connect with that state of love in your heart then you're in the place where the guidance flows through you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's relatively simple. This, what we call reframing and anchoring, an NLP term, reframing and anchoring with your soul's awareness. So instead of your normal- Those are, those are two, two NLP terms. That yeah, are, two terms. <laughs> we put and, together. And so it's relatively simple. We'll go through the steps. Uh, and the- Results can be quite profound because of that different state, that different energy you're bringing, like a higher energy into your everyday world. It's, it's like meditation when people meditate and go to a higher state and suddenly they're in their body, but they're seeing things very differently. 
and and things rearrange, realign, shift, and it can have actually uh, profound physical results as well. Right. Right. And if you if you look at a holistic model, which is what we adapted um, in the 1990s, because it seemed the most objective, <laughs> didn't have a lot of um, external kind of stuff going on. You're looking at uh, the levels of the uh, physical, energetic, physical, emotional, mental, spiritual, and it goes on from there. But the spiritual is the deepest. When you clear things from a spiritual level, you're clearing everything within it. So the physical is the densest, then energetic, physical, emotional, mental, spiritual. When you clear for, clear the spiritual, you're clearing everything. So it's that's the most complete level of healing. And when you connect with that love in your heart, that divine love in your heart, then you're connecting with the most powerful energy you can use for healing. So then, of course, the question is, how do you put it put <laughs> those together so you can access that energy to heal, which is what we did with our with spiritual kinesiology. Mm hmm. Right. Right. And uh, should we talk about some of the benefits of of the of learning this? Yeah, sure. And it is, and we bring it up because our <laughs> in this show we we have a topic that's also an affirmation, and because we want people to be able to benefit from it from actually using <laughs> using these the strategies that we propose, and so our strategy for the week is reap the benefits of spiritual healing. So to do that, you need a system or a, a technique like the one that we're sharing today. And it, and it, it is, well, Sharon, what, I mean, from what, when you first saw the reframing and anchoring, what did you think? I mean, I know I thought this couldn't <laughs> possibly, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's like, it's yeah. ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> it's like, Oh, yeah. No way. Right. Right. And we, we actually, we developed this, we developed it. <laughs> and I think it was a whole year after we recognized how we could do it before we were willing to share it with anybody else, because we, we couldn't believe that it could be as good as it seemed to be ourselves. And, but that was, that was around maybe 1996. So <laughs> we, fortunately we had plenty of time between then and now, and we actually, then we wrote a book on it and, and we've been using it with clients, students, and in our uh, public appearances and, and in our uh, literature, our, our, our books for all of those years. And it's been proven to be just as effective as it seems to be, even though it seems like it's just really ridiculous. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very skeptical. I was. <laughs> I was too. I that's why it took a while to teach it because you think you know you're going to look like an idiot doing this. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And, and and the benefits are um if you can get over your skepticism and fears, which are really based on mainstream consensus thinking, it's kind of mm -hmm. like, well. You know, as when people hear like cures of cancer and all these alternative things that really work, um, people naturally say, well, well, if they're so effective, why doesn't everyone know about them? You know, why isn't everyone doing them? Which is a you know, reasonable question. And the answer really is in part just because we haven't gotten there yet, you know? Right. You know, right. When, we have what, so much baggage. If you look at, to me, if you look at, it's like a tale of two realities. The reality we're in for most people is pretty limited. And, and the belief in spirituality as, as a possibility for making uh, monumental gains in society um, is, is very low. Right. So I think when you do these kinds of things, you might be ridiculed for it. And I think that was maybe one of the things. Yeah. You know, you you know, for all of us, we're kind of like, oh, I don't know, <laughs> I don't know yeah, if I want to talk bubble. about this. We don't want to seem foolish, and, it's, <laughs> and you know, it's good to be have some grounding in all this. You know, it's like if we were in the time of Galileo or, or Copernicus, and people were saying, you know, what do you mean? 
the earth isn't the center of the solar system and the <laughs> earth revolves around the sun. Are you crazy? I mean, that's just crazy stuff. You know, that doesn't make any sense. Right. Right. But yeah. after a while, and, and what we're talking about today, a year from now, 10 years from now, 20 years from now, it's just going to be, well, this is self-evident stuff. Of course, the spiritual healing, a higher level is going to help us on our more mundane physical level. In fact, the spiritual, is, this physical is embedded in, and wrapped in this spiritual. So it makes sense that the spiritual would heal and shift that. Right. I'm you know, really also, one of the, oh, go ahead, Sharon. Also, um, growing up in a, a religious family, um, I was told that, oh, hands-on healing was wrong. And anything except a, approved Western medicine was wrong. And then I trained to be a nurse and um, uh, worked in that belief system. And um, so that took some getting over on my part. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And I think it does for most of us. I was an architect. I was very left brain. And I, and when we, when Philip and I first started exploring healing, I thought, well, gee, you know, this is really a lot of fun, but I'll never be any good at it <laughs> because, you know, I'm just not that kind of person. And then after a period of time, I realized, hmm, actually, <laughs> <laughs> maybe I need to think about this again yeah. and it and it is it's really just I think a miraculous journey that we're on yeah and here's the big shift for people who are listening most people who are listening to this kind of say this makes sense or they wouldn't even watch such a thing you know it just would be too far out but for people who get it who are there who are ready when the te when you're ready the teacher arrives right uh, when you're ready, uh, this makes a lot of sense, but here's the next step for those listening. Are you willing to follow it? Well, try it. I think that's one thing. at least thing start, is... start off trying it. And then, you yeah. know, once you realize it makes sense and it works and you, you, you know, you, you're convinced like we are, just like we said, we were skeptical. When you start to see the results, as you'll see in the demo in a couple minutes on Sharon, you'll say, hey, there is something to this. Right. Yeah. And we, we, in our work, we work with uh, a lot of students in our trainings, and we always, and I think Sharon, Sharon would say this is true, we always say, we don't expect you to believe anything we say. Hmm. It's really about confirming it for yourself. Yep. Because we don't want people to, we, we don't actually want, and some people, <laughs> spiritual teachers really do want people to walk away saying, these people know the truth. What we want is for people to walk away saying, I know the truth. And I think that's a big difference. Right. Is that I, I have the truth within myself and I know it. And when you do a clearing process, if you're, if you're in a place where something is <laughs> disturbing you, I mean, technically the, the problem is that you're disconnected from the truth. The things that we General, generally believed to be true as limitations here on the physical plane are illusions. So we're believing the illusion and then we're not even considering the truth or that it's possible that a more spiritually oriented reality could be the truth. But once you connect with it and, and when you heal an issue where the problem is you a part of you has become disconnected from that truth, then what flows from that is actually your inner wisdom. And I think for me, when you do this process, that's one of, that's really the, you could say the frosting on the cake or the really fun part is that you, someone, they're connecting with this truth and they have the, the solution is there now for them. I, wouldn't you say, Sharon? I mean, that's my experience. You are who you're waiting for. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's a wonderful way to say it. Yeah, it, it really is. It's miraculous. Now, I would never have thought it could be what it is, but we, and we make it much more difficult <laughs> than it has to be. Not to say that the journey doesn't have a lot of ups and downs. I mean, if we're talking about actually making a dimensional shift, it's a it is a journey. 
And the way that we actually take steps on the journey is we face challenges and overcome them. So we're going to have challenges. But then if we started seeing those obstacles as opportunities for our growth, it becomes more interesting. Like, hmm, I wonder what, you know, what this is. Mm -hmm. uh, well, Jane, should we go into a demonstration or? Um, we can. Uh, did you have any other comments, uh, Sharon, on just spiritual healing or any general comments on the process? It, it really just kind of falls into place as you need it. It's, it's not a, a big quest, you know, major uh, quest. It, it just, as you need it, it happens. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and I think it is true. It's easy to take it more seriously than, <laughs> than you need to. In fact, the lighter you are about it, the more, the closer you are to that state of connectedness. When And so when you're connected with the love in your heart and connected with the divine, then you're connected with possibilities too. And so the goal is to, to be in that place and then return the parts of us that aren't in that place, bring them back into that wholeness of connectedness just as kind of an overview. Right. So you want to go ahead? Tom? Yeah, so so just real briefly, uh, what the process is, is, is finding an issue and, um, and, and then connecting it with the soul. And there's different ways to do that, which we'll demonstrate. Uh, and having a couple rounds of that where you find the issue and, and connect it with the soul. And that shifts the energy when you have that soul awareness. Um, overlaying the issue, the problem, the separation. Right. And then you see the results and you evaluate it. And uh, we have places in our website getting through thru.org slash holistic, which explains spiritual kinesiology. And there's a lot of different trainings on it. Um, we wanted to give like a simple demonstration of it uh, without being able to, to teach it all, but you'll get a kind of a good flavor of it. And it could be pretty amazing the results we see even today and it happens can happen pretty quickly mm -hmm. so I'll take and, the, and this is something also this reframing and anchoring process that uh sharon and philip are going to do is something just about anybody can do this, right. it's not rocket science it's just like in fact it's actually <laughs> something where you're you're anchoring different states in different places on the body doesn't matter where they are technically and you don't have to know a lot about why you're doing it. And this is why I said it seems ridiculous because <laughs> you yep. wouldn't think, you know, how could this work? Um, but it, it is something that's, that is very doable. Yeah, it's very easy once you learn it. It takes a few minutes to learn it. Reframing and anchoring our NLP, Neural Linguistic Programming Terms. And very simply, the jargon means reframing is seeing things like from a different frame, a different perspective. Uh, which all healing really uh, is. Mm -hmm. And then anchoring is referencing, anchoring, tying it into, uh, in this case, a place in your body just to rep remember or reference to put the issue at hand. Uh, and you can use this with EFT tapping technique or co uh, complementary with other techniques, which we often do, or often as a standalone. For us, it's usually our preferred method because it's so effective and so profound. All right, so that takes us over to Sharon and we start with finding an area to address, to reframe, to see differently. Sharon? Well, I, I am uh, wanting, considering strongly, uh, <laughs> creating a, a, a course, a coaching course to, to help uh, women uh, lose a hundred pounds or more, mm -hmm. and I I go through. You know, who am I to say I can help mm -hmm. anybody? Um, right. So I, I I'm not feeling the confidence to do that. Um, I'm just kind of afraid to step out mm -hmm. and make myself vulnerable. Right. right. Yeah. Um, right. 
it's it's yeah uh, that's a stumbling block for me okay so i think the issue is clear i'm sure a lot of people listening watching can relate um so we start with the quote issue the problem the separation and these are kind of things we all have our variety uh our versions of these kind of things and when it's good to know something specific like sharon did tied to her uh wanting to create that course so we start first with the um the feeling or the belief or the problem quote and that lack of confidence uh what kind of feeling uh is that feeling vulnerable how would you put it um yeah, a, a fear of uh, not rejection, but nobody wants to come to that party. Okay. Uh, well, I think rejection sounds pretty accurate, though. Is it something other than rejection? <clears throat> fear of uh, no, that yeah. really yeah. fear of rejection. Jane, does yeah. that sound right? Rejection. If it sounds right to her, and I think this is another thing with a process like this is that the words a person's words like Sharon's words are what is most meaningful to her and she yeah. she mentioned rejection and it, it probably yeah. isn't accurate yeah word. I mean that yeah. sounded pretty close there may be <clears throat> some other things tied into it so we found the issue and it's good to identify it. that's kind of the beginning of this process after you identify what we're talking about <laughs> and we measure it on a suds level that's another term standard units of distress a way of self reporting just to evaluate it before and after. So before, which is now, is one to 10, 10 being total, how much fear of rejection do you have on this, on your course uh, succeeding? Oh, it's a good eight at least. All right. All right, so that's an anchor. When we can anchor that, we can reference it by touching a place in our body, which tells us we refer to this fear in this case by touching a part of our body, it could be any part. We'll kind of do a part that the, you can see in the camera. Can you touch a shoulder? Uh, yep. Okay. Yeah, okay, so you're touching your, your right shoulder, okay. Okay, so that's an anchor. And now you remove, you oh. clear your mind and remove your hand. That's part one of the process. And part two is connecting, as we said, with the soul. There are many ways to do that. Uh, one way is a, just a brief visualization. I'll take Sharon through, and since she's taken our training, she knows it well, where she kind of breathes and relax and opens herself up, feels a little more relaxed. Right, Sharon? Some yes, nice hello. <laughs> deep breaths through her nose. So relaxed. Yeah, and through the nose, and then exhaling slowly, and that releases and and relaxes her heart and her nervous system and opens up her energy system as she breathes in that pure, clear energy. Again, and she exhales, relaxing her whole body nice and gently and breathing in pure, clear energy into her heart and exhaling again, releasing slowly, releasing, relaxing her nervous system, letting her body go, just letting her be more still and open and aware. Good. And as that becomes more and more aware, that heart opens up more and that connects with her soul, which may be a sense, an image, a presence, a sound, some sort of connection where she begins to sense it. And some people get this right away. Some people, it takes them a while to make this connection. Sharon, are you beginning to sense a connection there? Yes. Yes. I, I, I feel like a, an energy, not maybe a, a, a light just streaming down mm -hmm. okay and that yeah. light you could say is is light from source so it, okay that's a, that's a good thing so she's opening up to that higher light coming into her body into her whole system and as she connects further with that light from her soul and the source uh you can touch her other shoulder sharon and anchor that so we anchor that on the other shoulder with the other hand Okay, so Sharon touching that. Okay, good, very good. And now release that hand, good. Now touch both shoulders like you did with the same hands you originally did. And you 
clear your mind and release the hand, the first hand, the, the hand that was connected with the, the rejection. So just release that first hand on your right shoulder. Good. And just hang out there with the hand connected to the source and the light. Okay. And some people, sometimes people get a sense or a message from that, which may or may not occur. Uh, Sharon, are you getting any sense about your situation from at this moment? Uh, just a, a comforting feeling like that it's okay. Mm -hmm. You're okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. As simple as that sounds, it's very profound. All right. And now just remove your hand and clear your mind again and just hang out. So that was one round of reframing and anchoring. We, we, the spiritual, the kinesiology is a muscle testing part, which is another element is optional you can use, but we don't need that. What we're doing now is just fine and it's just right. And so now re checking in again, we're reevaluating. We're at the stage where we did, did the process. Now we're seeing what happened. So now let's go back to the original place, mm. giving the course, people showing up, how you're feeling, and so forth. What what's that like now? I I say a four. Okay, a four. What's a four? The the fear, fear of rejection. Rejection. Okay. Yeah. Anything else that you're noticing? What was what was it to begin? I it was eight. To, it went eight to four. So that's fifty percent reduction. Right. Yeah. That you know that's that means that something changed, and I think that it's right. not com completely done. But this is another point that you need to be sure to understand is that just one round, if it doesn't completely go away in one round, that doesn't mean you're not succeeding. If it's right. changing, then That's you're a big going shift. in the right direction. Anything else that's showing up or is it basically the same fear of rejection? It, um, also, I, I, I feel not confident then I can do it. Like, I'm not sure I, if I did, there's the fact that if I did try, maybe I would be rejected, but now it's more like, should I even try? You mean that you're not competent enough to, to teach such a course? Yeah. So there's a fear of, of incompetence, a, a fear of, um, uh, it's another kind of, it's another, it's another fear of failure. In fact, it's another variation. So there's one, and this is, this is good to show because people say, oh, why, am, why am I not doing it? One, I'm fear that no one's going to show up. It's not going to work. And two, if people do show up, I have this other fear that it, it you know, I'm not going to do very well if they actually even do show up. Yeah. Yeah. So how, how strong? Well, for, also, I think there's a little distinction here because what I, what I would understand, you can tell me if, if this is right is what you're saying is that I'm not good enough, you know, which is a judgment of ourselves. And this is, this, this comes from the heart. So this is your, actually, this is a, a block at the spiritual level. And there are the blocks that we perceive are at different levels. So I'm, yeah, what you need to overcome now is I'm not good enough. Right. If that's the way you would say it, if, you know, if you have another way of saying it, yeah. that's fine too. Yeah as distinctive as yeah i i know the material or I, you know i i can i know the material but um so but yeah from my heart you're right uh am i good enough mm -hmm. and this is see this is the the ultimate illusion or delusion is that mm -hmm we aren't worthy, <laughs> you know, we're not good enough, we're flawed, you know, we're whatever it is. And, and that's the thing that we need to overcome. It's really a transformation of our perspective on who we are that we're right. going for. Yeah. So that we're, we're, we're so this is, I mean, that's a very profound thing. It's also, I'm sure, and it's a vulnerable place to be, to admit, you know, but I think the, the reassuring thing is that we all have it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the, the interesting thing is there's, you know, how many billions or trillions of people on earth who feel they're not good enough. Right. Seven trillion people. I don't know. Seven trillion people and counting, you know, 
So once you start, I don't to think realize, there are trillions of people. There are billions. <laughs> billions? How many are there? Billions or trillions? There are six billion, six billion people. I is think billions of people. I'm, I'm not okay, trillions. Well, however many, seven billion people are not good enough. Well, how, whatever the number is exactly, and once you start realizing it, it almost makes light of like you know, is this is there seven billion people not good enough? You know, uh, you know the people who've succeeded and made the best you know multi million dollar courses. You know they still think they're not good enough, or they have sort of a flip side mm -hmm. of arrogance of think they're above it all, but beneath well, it. Well, and some people have transcended that too. There, yeah, uh, some people a certain have number gotten, of people, not not a lot yeah. of people, but some people. So it's pretty that's common we're, stuff. You know what we're yeah, yeah but it, yeah, it's not it's not like we should feel like this means there's something wrong with me. It means that I'm misunderstanding the truth. Yeah, and this is very common stuff. And once you realize how common it is, it doesn't become so heavy. At least that's what I find. It's not a big deal. When you know, you know, everyone down your street doesn't feel good enough, you know, most people on one thing or another. And it's a delusion because they know the stuff and everything. So there's some kind of distortion going on. And they're not connected with their soul. They're obviously not seeing it from their soul's perspective because your soul's just said you're okay and you're you're okay. It's okay. You just mm -hmm. your soul already knows that that's not true, right? Right. Because but that's all me saying okay. words and things that you <laughs> mentally know. So now we just need to, to make it go deeper into your heart, and then we need to remember I said at the beginning people know this, but they don't live it. If this you get deeper, then you're more likely to live it and you reinforce it and you take follow up steps and coaching steps and support to, to integrate this further. But let, let's finish the process. Uh, okay, so fear of rejection about people showing up, fear of rejection of doing the process, of doing the course, fear of basically I'm not good enough one way or the other, kind of it's uh, Hydra heads coming up in different places. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. All right. So I'm not good enough for, for to do the course. One out of 10. How strong? 10 being total. Yeah, six. What's that? Six. Six. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. So let's anchor that again. Anchor it. Okay. Now clear your mind and remove your anchor. Remove your hand. Just let that go for a moment, Sharon. Now let's go back to the light that's coming streaming down from above, right? That light that told you you're okay. It's okay. And when you're feeling a connection again with that, put your hand on your other shoulder. Good. What's it like now? Um, the sun, what's it like? Yeah, w w no. what's the energy like of, of connecting oh, with your soul in okay. this moment? Okay. Um, like a hug. It's like a hug. <laughs> Sounds good. I like that. I like it too. Yeah, okay. So re <laughs> remove your hand, clear your mind. Let the hug go for a moment, although it's still there metaphysically hugging you. Okay. So now put your hands on both anchors, both shoulders same time and clear your mind and remove the the first anchor the negative anchor the not good enough anchor just let that one go hang out there with the hug and the light and the presence just letting it go a little deeper into your being let it be more real let it be more present let the acceptance and expansion and healing and love expand And what are you beginning to perceive now? Maybe there's something you're beginning to notice, Sharon. Um, instead of who am I to presume I could <laughs> do this? Mm -hmm. who, am I, who am I to not share this? What I know I can do. Wow. Yeah. Right. Beautiful. Right. Yeah, that, that's it. That's it. Remove your hand, clear your mind. Take a deep breath. <laughs> yeah, the hug. Like to say. Well, you're not letting go of it. You're you're yeah. in that space now. You're and still, that's yeah. the, that's you, the, the more you do this, the more you integrate the soul center. And that's the whole stages of spiritual evolution, which we share and teach elsewhere. But this is a, a wonderful component. So rechecking, reevaluating. We did round two of spiritual kinesiology. Took about another five minutes. It's, it's, it's a pretty quick process, actually. 
And now we check in. We go back to feeling good enough. What's that like now? Um, uh, well, of course I can. <laughs> it's, it's just not even there. So when you sense or see yourself in the future with your course, what comes to mind now? Um, uh, I am able to help and I'll be able to reach whoever's looking for me. Mm -hmm. Okay. And what's the sense of confidence now? Um, that, uh, I am totally capable of this. Yes. And, absolutely. And you kind of knew that on one level, but now knowing it on another level, what does that mean? What does that mean? Like this week, what does this week and this month look like for you? Knowing that you can <laughs> teach this course, that your soul is, is connected with you, that your deeper desires on, what does that mean? What's going to change in your life now? So you just, don't say this was a good experience. Now I just go back to, I'm not good enough. What's going to change? Yeah. I, or I just go back to not taking steps. Yeah. Um, so yes, I'm, I, I'm feeling prompted to, um, to take action. And I guess the first thing I, I want to do is, is to um, ask for people to uh, join me in, in this uh, as, as someone looking for a coach um, to. Um, you mean ways to I, let people know about your course? Is that what you mean by people joining you? Well, she's saying she wants to ask people to join her. In fact, as, there's some people on the call. On the, yeah, there's some people on the, I just looked at, there's John Rendell. And there's several people who've actually connected and David uh, Ellis, we know David, who's saying you're going to succeed. John Rendell said, God love you, which is a nice uh, comment. So you got some people <laughs> watching you. live here who are supporting you too. Right. Now, uh, can I add something here? Yes. And this is, I think, a really, to me, a key point when I'm working with people with healing and coaching. Um, so Sharon, now you're saying that you feel you said prompted mm -hmm. in terms of being by prompted do you would you say you feel enthusiastic or excited about doing it or i mean emotionally what does that mean to you feeling prompted it feels like my guides are nudging me mm -hmm. well, uh, does and to take action. So, I mean, in terms of going ahead, does that feel exciting or difficult or? Oh, yeah. 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 Uh, and I, not difficult. No. Right. It, right. And that's the point I want to make is like when you started, if you had gone ahead without clearing, would it have felt exciting or difficult? Oh, monumentally difficult. Yeah. Right. Right. And I think the, the, the point in that is that a lot of times, you know, people they're carrying these, all of these, you know, these heavy loads with them. Like, oh, this is going to be so hard, but I'm going to do it anyhow and go through life that way. Whereas you can do clearing like this and then you're excited about it. And I mean, would you say you feel heavy or light or where, you know, in between? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like a, a helium balloon on a string. <laughs> <laughs> right. And that's, we call it, we call that state uh, being in a state of inspired action. Mm -hmm. And that's in terms of actually manifesting things. That's where we would suggest that people would want to be right in that place where you feel excited, inspired, like it's, it's fun, you know, <laughs> whether it happens or not, I'm having a good time. And mm -hmm. <laughs> it's just like a yeah. good thing. Yeah. It's a more joyous journey and it becomes uh, something where you're almost dishonoring your soul. If you're not going ahead, Hey, this is, you know, what I'm here to do. I can help people. I have to stop thinking of myself and my fears. I can get, get stop being my own worst enemy, so to speak, or I can get out of my way, stay with the lightness, stay with the hug, reach out to people and help think of other people instead of myself, because most of our burdens are very self-centered and that's the way, you know, billions of people, you know, get, holds us up and that's part of the journey. 
and you get free. You go, well, that makes more sense. Yeah, I still have that feeling of not good enough because that's going to still be there more or less. But I'm lighter and I'm more um, interested in what I can do and what I can help than fears of rejection and fears of not being good enough. Right. You're going to have a good time. <laughs> going to have a good time in, in, in the process. Why not? Absolutely. Anything else, uh, Sharon, you want to add as we're closing up here? Closing, getting closing shop in a moment, a few moments here for now? Well, I, you know, I don't have a website, but um, yes, people, people can find me on Facebook, I guess. Yeah, how people can find you in your upcoming course. So what under Sharon A. Williamson, is that how they find you? Yes. And yes. then they message you in there? And just message me, yes. And you'll be yeah. reaching out to people yeah. who are connected in Facebook with you and other people. So. Right. Right. Look me up. <laughs> yeah. Well, how does I that feel? You just, you just kind of uh, overcame one of your challenges about the fear of being rejected by even announcing that. What, how did that feel? Now I want to see if anybody responds. <laughs> um, I have a little trepidation there, but um yeah it is what it, it works is through that too right yeah, that's yeah. normal it's not yeah. going to be you know there hey there, right. there were many layers i mean this was a very profound process even though it, you know on the surface it seemed like oh you know it's just a few things that are holding you back but this is a common thing having worked with holistic practitioners jane and myself for a few decades including our own fears around similar things which were pretty yeah these are very common <laughs> things me, that people face and a lot of people, that's the end of the line. That's where they stop. You know, they get this far and that's, that's they're not going to go any further because they're not going to confront it. They're not going to go out of their comfort zone. They're going to stay in the fears and they're going to stay safe and basically unfulfilled, really. But, you know, it's sort of easier. It's easier in the short term, but in the long term, it's, it's very unsatisfying. It's like when people, the last things they regret what they didn't do. These are the kind of things mm -hmm. you regret. Mm -hmm. What you could do, but you didn't just because... You know, you let these fears stop you, which are very common and very present, you know, in us and other people. So we understand that. Sharon, anything you want to add to that? It kind of hit pretty direct there. Yeah, um, I can do this. <laughs> yes, you can. Yes, you can. I, I totally. Right, and there are so many people who need that help. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So they can find you at Sharon A. Williamson. They can find us at gettingthrough.org slash holistic. If they want to find our spiritual kinesiology training here, they can go to tinyurl.com uh, slash sk-course, sk-course for spiritual kinesiology, and they can learn about the course at our website. And they might want to get training on that for some people. And then we have other different trainings too, and that's just uh, one of them. Uh, yeah. Jane, do you want to add anything there? Well, for me, just looking at that healing system and other other things that we've learned and share in different places in our work, I can't imagine being without it. Like Sharon, can you imagine yeah. not having yeah. spiritual kinesiology? I mean, it just, it's so obvious. I feel like it saved us so many years of suffering and right. Mm -hmm. And probably dollars of doctors and <laughs> different yeah, yeah. different things because we can do a lot on our own. And uh, uh, we're not saying we're substitutes for med medical professionals in any way. We actually work as ministers. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's really that along with that, if if we're talking about something physical, that that you're also that you're you have these other opportunities. And I know Sharon has had healings on the physical level too. Right. I know she, she had fibromyalgia when she was working with us and that was much better. And, and there are just many things that you just never know what you can do for yourself unless you try it. <laughs> right. Right. Sharon, anything you want to add before we're, we close here? If you're uh, drifting like I was, um, just going where life was taking you, um, and you would like to anchor yourself, this is a good way to find out to who you are, to look into your soul. It, it Healing like this is amazing. Mm 
Mm-hmm. It is. You, you should all experience it. We highly recommend it. Yeah, they are. that's so beautiful. And and the thing is, people are afraid that they're going to find out that they're flawed. You know, that part <laughs> that I was, and that was the part that's the illusion. The truth is, each of us is a magnificent spiritual being with something unique and special to offer to people. Absolutely. Right. Right. Exactly. So this has been uh, Drs. Philip and Jane Montrose. That's us with wonderful Sharon A. Williamson, RN holistic mm-hmm. practitioner with her upcoming uh, holistic eating, losing weight, attaining your ideal weight course. Look for that at her website or rather her Facebook page at Sharon A. Williamson. And remember- uh, Yeah, you can start a page. You can start a Facebook page for it. Yep, that's another option. We can talk yeah. about that too. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And remember, these are keys you can use. Uh, Reap the Rewards of Spiritual Healing, the name of this show, the weekly uh, tip tool. Uh, And Soulful Living comes to you every week, Sunday, this time with us, Philip and Jane Montrose. Uh, Our website, getting through, getting thru.org slash holistic, getting through.org slash holistic. Remember, purchases of our courses support Awakenings Institute, our nonprofit organization, devoted to making the world a more loving, nurturing place. And share this uh, page, share the show with others you know. Have a a wonderful week, everyone. Thank you, Sharon. Yeah, thank you, Sharon. It was wonderful to see you. It was great.